Hello! Today I'd like to talk about Fallout 76's inventory. I've been playing the game as an online version of Fallout 4, and one of the big issues that I keep running into, or out of, pun intended, is inventory space. Inventory is one of the most noticeable differences between Fallout 76 and Fallout 4. Basically in the online version, pretty much everything weighs something, and many things that are weightless in the single player game are pretty heavy in Fallout 76. That's even before considering infinite carry mods and tactics like using companions as pack mules. If you played Fallout 4 in survival mode, then managing your personal inventory in Fallout 76 will be more familiar. But the online game also limits how much you can store in your stash to 1200 pounds total. At some point you'll run into these limits, so let me share some tips on how to increase your carry capacity, maximize how many things you can carry, and what habits you need to learn in order to avoid being frustrated. Don't forget the basics. Maximize your inventory capacity is one of the things you should do first. How much you can carry is affected by your strength. Every point means you can carry 5 more pounds. You can raise your natural strength up to 15 in Fallout 76. One tip to keep in mind is that you can get legendary perks later down the line that allow you to increase your special attributes and how many perk cards you can have by up to 5 points. The total cap still remains at 15 though, so if you're planning to get this legendary perk, you'll want to raise your strength to no more than 10, then together with a fully upgraded legendary perk for strength, it should hit the cap of 15. Another thing you can do to increase your inventory space is build a backpack. With the release of the pit expansion, new characters now get a small backpack as they leave the vault, but you'll have to make new ones every 10 levels until level 50 to get more carrying capacity as your character grows. You find the plans for a small backpack by following the overseas main quest, and the plans for a large one by taking part in Pioneer Scout activities. At level 50, the small backpack gives you 30 extra carrying capacity, while the normal backpack gives you double that for 60 extra pounds. Later on, you can also acquire and spend Pioneer Scout tokens to get the plans for a mod that will give you another 60 pounds for a total of 120 if you apply it to a normal backpack, but at the cost of losing 60 energy and rad resistance. So if you get that mod, you'll be trading protection for more carrying capacity. Acquiring the scout backpacks and the mods is pretty involved though, so expect to be using this small backpack for a long while. One thing to keep in mind is that backpacks don't work in power armor, so your inventory capacity will most likely be greater outside power armor. You might even find that you end up overweight when you get into power armor. But as you go up levels, enemies become strong enough that you want to be in power armor to stay alive. So it's not a bad idea to wear power armor to clear a location of enemies first, then to get out of your power armor to loot the place. That way you can get the combat benefit of your power armor, but the extra capacity of your backpack when you're safe, then travel back to camp and sort out your loot. It's also not a bad idea to have two backpacks on you if you play without power armor. A second one with extra carrying capacity for carrying all the loot home. Some armor types can be modded to have the pocketed property, and each modded item will give you an extra 5 pounds of carrying capacity. So you can have an extra 25 pounds by modifying all your armor to be pocketed. When you get into power armor, your armor is automatically removed. So just like the backpack, this bonus only works outside power armor. The downside is that only some armor types can be modded this way, and learning the pocketed mod will take a bit of time, because the only way you learn new mods is by breaking down the same type of armor pieces over and over again and hoping that Iron Jesus is with you. Some legendary effects also benefit your carrying capacity. Plus one strength means you can carry 5 pounds more. And there's other legendary effects that reduce the weight of gear. But it might mean that you have to pass on some pretty good alternative effects though. One of the perks that you'll be familiar with from the single player games is Strong Back. Upgrading it to tier 4 will give you an extra 40 pounds of carrying capacity. Unlike the single player game, perks can be activated and removed whenever you want. So it's not a bad idea to get this perk and only activate it when you're looting. Until now I've been focusing on ways to permanently increase your carrying capacity, but there's also situations when you're just a touch overweight and you just have to have that last bit of loot. That's where consumables come in. There's three types of consumables. Food and drink are the most easily available. You'll find alcohol pretty much everywhere, and taking a drink will give you an extra plus one to strength for a couple of minutes. It's great for when you need a couple of extra pounds to fast travel back to camp. You should save whiskey for occasions like this, because it gives you plus 2 to strength. Eating roasted rat stag and rebuy steak will give you an extra 20 pound carrying capacity for half an hour. 
you can find rat stacks and brahmins near flatwoods and many sites have rat stack corpses that you can loot for meat. Roaster ant will also give you an extra 10 pounds for the same time. Drugs are also an option. There's several like buff out and buff tats that you can use to give you a temporary boost to strength. They typically last for a few minutes at most, so they're useful to take just before traveling back to camp. Consuming multiples of the same items do not stack, so don't try to eat 5 ribeye steaks and expect to get an extra 100 pounds carrying capacity. You only get 20 pounds extra, the same as eating a single steak. But you can eat both a ribeye steak and the roast rat stag and get an extra 40 pounds of carrying capacity. And you can combine food, drinks and chems to give you a pretty big increase, even if it's just for a few minutes. So far we've covered the things you can do to increase your carrying capacity, but there's other ways to maximize how much you can actually carry. The most important of these is the perks that reduce item weight. They don't technically improve your carrying capacity, but by reducing how much things weigh, that allows you to carry more with the same capacity. So in effect it's the same thing. There's perks that reduce the weight of weapons, ammunition, and miscellaneous items like food, chemicals, and junk. Typically the weight reduction will be around 90% if you upgrade the perks to the maximum tier. Most of these perks are found under strength, but there's also a couple of others under agility and intelligence. Weapons can be pretty heavy, particularly fully upgraded ones and can weigh around 15 to 20 pounds and since you can't just leave them behind, reducing the weight to 10% of the normal weight makes a big difference if you want to carry several to cover different needs. Most weapon types have a weight reduction perk that affects them, but for some reason there's no perk for rifles. So ironically you can carry 5 or 6 miniguns for the weight of a rifle. In the long term you'd be wise to specialize in one type of weapon rather than carrying multiple types because that maximizes the impact of your perks. Chemicals are also a lot heavier than you'd think, and as you might expect, being able to heal yourself does come pretty handy when you're fighting. Reducing the weight is useful, because you can manage without that perk by only carrying whatever you need for your current mission, and regularly going back to camp to restock. The same goes for food, being well fed and hydrated gives you pretty big bonuses to action point refresh, which is very useful if you use vats a lot, and avoiding diseases. But you can't die from lack of food, so it's not critical and you can get by without carrying any food or drink. Ammunition generally doesn't weigh that much, but if you use power armor, it's handy to know that fusion cores are classed as energy ammunition, so you can save a huge amount of weight by taking the perk. That perk is even more handy if you use a Gatling laser, because they fire fusion cores, so you can kill two birds with one stone. One gotcha to be aware of is that if you have these cards equipped, the gear in your stash is still a full weight. So the Gatling gun that weighs 1.6 pounds in your inventory will be 16 pounds in the stash. The problem is that the item weight still shows the reduced weight in the user interface, so don't be misled by this. If you have these weight saving perks, it's actually better to keep those items in your inventory instead of putting them into the stash. My main character is currently carrying at least 20 legendary heavy guns that I'm waiting to sell. Another thing to keep in mind is that you can activate and disable perks whenever you want. So it's possible to only enable weight saving cards when you've cleared a location and want to maximize your looting. Your special attribute allocation limits how many cards you can have active. But after you reach level 25, you can use the punch card machine to rearrange your perks and your attributes. There's no penalty at all and the only limitation is that you can only do this at one of those punch card machines so you can't change your special attributes on the fly. The game also allows you to have multiple profiles on each character and multiple characters per account. So you can set up different profiles for different purposes and swap between them easily. And another one more combat focused for when you're intending to do activities like public missions or daily operations. You start with two profiles by default, but if you want more profiles, you can buy them with atoms. And if you've been saving up the ones the game gives you as you play, you should have enough to avoid spending any real money. Alternate characters don't share stashes or perk cards with other characters. After you reach level 50 and start choosing legendary perks, all your characters will use the same ones, but alternate characters will not have their legendary perks upgraded. Basically, alternate characters are for different styles of runs. For example, a pure single player that does not participate in public events. But no matter what you do, you'll eventually run out of space in your inventory and stash. You also need to change your habits, particularly if you've come from the single player games. Loot respawns in locations, so you can basically loot as much as you want. That's good news for all the construction that you might want to do. 
The problem will be that you can't keep all of it because your stash is limited. To avoid wasting space, the first thing you should do is break down your junk. That can be done at any workbench and luckily the game provides at least one workbench at each rail station. And many locations have workbenches scattered around so you can junk as you explore them. But you should also manually check the junk tab again. Some loot breaks down into intermediate components. They're useful for quests and for crafting. But unless you're planning to use them soon, you should manually break them down into their basic components to save space. Then store the final raw materials in your stash. Many raw materials can't be sold directly. You can tell which ones these are by looking at the price. If it says zero, then it can't be sold directly. But if you bulk package them at the Tinker's workbench, the NPC vendors will buy them. It costs a bit of plastic and the vendors don't pay much, but it does help you clear your stash while making a few caps. Generally speaking, you should not store too much in raw materials in your stash. Loot is always available, so if you find you're collecting too much of one material, don't hesitate to either bulk sell it or deliberately waste it by constructing items for the experience or even just dumping it. Keep a few hundred at most, but not too much. If you absolutely must have all the materials in the world, then one option is to purchase the Fallout First subscription package. It will give you access to build a scrap box and you can store an unlimited amount of materials in it. One thing that might surprise new players is that ammunition can't be sold to NPCs. You can set up vending machines and sell it to other players, but they're also likely to have too much ammunition, so you shouldn't rely on that happening too often. The key thing to remember is that if you don't use a type of ammunition, feel free to just give it away or dump it. Keep a couple of hundred rounds of the ammunition you do use. The game is pretty generous about giving you ammunition, and if you use a particular type of gun, you'll tend to find more of the same ammo. If you're not using miniguns or other automatic weapons, then you'll probably never run out of ammunition. I've actually had to dump thousands of shotgun shells because I just didn't have the space to keep them. As you loot, you'll also find gunpowder. It goes under the miscellaneous tab of your inventory, but it weighs quite a bit. You need it to craft ammo and fire muskets and black powder pistols. Don't bother keeping more than a handful in your inventory or your stash. Either turn it into ammo as soon as possible or just dump it. It's a good idea to keep a reserve of pre-war food and chems that you do use, just in case. You probably won't need it because you'll often be finding animals and they provide meat that you can cook and if you walk a bit, you'll run across harvestable plants that you can use to brew teas. Just like everything else, don't keep too much. The good news is that you can sell these for caps. You won't get a huge amount of money, but cooking will give you experience and if you have too much money, you can always spend it on buying plants or rare materials that you might need. If you plant some crops at your base, you'll have a renewable supply, so you should have as much soup and teas as you need to keep yourself fully fed and hydrated. Every time you break down a weapon or armor piece, you have a chance to learn a new mod. This is entirely chance based, and the more mods you already know, the lower the chance of learning a new mod. On top of that, you can only learn mods for that particular item. So if you happen to learn a new mod for a leather left arm, then you can't apply the same mod to the leather chest. It has to be the same piece type. The same goes for guns. A mod for a pump action shotgun does not apply to a double barrel or a combat shotgun. Don't bother keeping any weapons or armor that you don't plan to use immediately. Break it down. Even if it looks like it might be useful in a few levels, break it down because you'll definitely find more. The only exception is for super rare weapons like Tesla rifles, chainsaws and Gatling plasma guns. For anything more common, scrap away. It will save you space and give you a chance to learn a new mod. Watch out for grenades and other throwables too, they can weigh quite a bit. You can equip a perk to reduce the weight, but generally it's not worthwhile unless you go for a build specifically focused on explosive weapons. Keep a few of the best type and sell the rest for caps. The properties of a legendary are randomly chosen, so you'll always have items that aren't useful to you. A rolling pin is pretty bad, even if it's got the best properties. You can't scrap legendaries, but you can sell the ones you don't want. There's a legendary exchange vending machine at every rail station that will pay a legendary script for anything you sell. You can use that script to buy legendary items from a special vendor. You don't get to choose the legendary properties, so it's still random. But you do get to choose the type of weapon, so the chance of getting something useful is much better. Be careful about selling useful 2 and 3 star legendaries, but don't hesitate to do that if you've got something better already. One special trick you can use for power armor pieces is to store them in power armor frames, then store the frame. 
Typically power armor pieces weigh more than 10 pounds and the weight increases as you get more advanced pieces. But the frame always weighs 10 pounds, regardless of whether they're full or empty. So you can save quite a bit of space by using frames as intermediate storage for legendary power armor pieces that you're waiting to sell. There's no way to construct power armor frames, but you can find frames around the world. And once you've entered them, they're assigned to you and nobody else can use them. If you have too many, you can scrap them just like any other piece of armor. But be careful because the game allows you to scrap frames, even if they contain power armor pieces. And those pieces will end up in your inventory. This method allows you to keep unique or spare power armor sets in your stash, but without taking up too much space. Everything I've spoken about is focused on avoiding being over encumbered. But what happens if you do go over the weight limit? The effects are that you can't sprint, and normal fast movement will use up action points. If you run out of action points, your character will only be able to slowly walk. Fast travel is also not allowed. It's actually not that bad, and you can absolutely play while over encumbered. Especially if you play stealthy or wear tanky power armor. Avoiding grenades does become a bit of an issue. But generally speaking, you can fight and explore just as effectively. The big issue is the lack of fast travel. But you only have to find any workbench and you'll be able to reduce your weight by scrapping. At worst, you'll have to waddle over to the nearest rail station, which is a bit inconvenient, but it's not the end of the world. The key to managing your inventory and your stash without frustration is to not be too greedy. You don't need to have dozens of different weapons. You don't need 10,000 rounds of the same ammo, not even for miniguns. You don't have to have enough junk to reconstruct the castle from Fallout 4. Pretty much anything you can keep in your stash can be obtained again. Loot renews. Enemies will keep dropping weapons and ammo. You can plant vegetables or hunt for food, and so on. Some high level players have said that their stash is mostly legendaries, and I think I agree that that would be the case in the long run. Combine that with weight saving perks, and you can carry a surprising amount of gear on your character. At the moment my high level character is carrying dozens of heavy guns, thousands of rounds of ammunition, dozens of fusion cores, tons of food and chemicals, plus a power armor set that I can get into if things get hairy, and I still have a decent amount of spare carrying capacity. Inventory and stash limits can be frustrating, but if you keep these tips in mind, you'll find that the inventory limitations will not be as problematic as it might seem at first glance, and the game will be a lot more fun to play. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.